So then the names of the gods are established. And this is my, I mean, it's like my next question is like, how many gods we can find there? And how do you find it? I mean, do you yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, how many gods? There's no end to the number of gods. No there's end. Infinite, oh, my God. Infinite <laughs> gods. So there's, you know, if you look at texts, for example, uh, there, there'll be a text in which this question is asked. I mean, so these are texts that go back to 8th century, right? Mm -hmm. There's a debate going on between a teacher and other teachers. And so one teacher asks, this is 8th century BC. That's about you know, 700 and something BC, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, one teacher asks, how many gods are there to, to the other teacher, right? And he says, there are 333 gods. Uh, but this guy doesn't stop. He says, again, how many gods are there? So the next answer, he says, there are 33 gods. How many gods are there? There are three gods. How many <laughs> gods are there? There are one and a half gods. How many gods are there? There is one god. So then he asked, what do you mean? Then he will explain the 333 are so many of these, so many of these, so many of these. The 33 are these, these, these. The three are these. So basically, the idea in India is there are as many gods as anything that you can name. Okay. You can be a god, ah, right? Yes. You are a god. So you think uh, that um, the word god, I mean, like uh, we translate it in, in English or in Occident, is is wrong to, to translate it like this? So maybe like I uh, hear the Indians, the pre-Hispanic, uh, they say that this should not be gods, the name should be like energy or something like that. Well, it, it could be, it could be God also, because the, the idea, the idea of God is the absolute one, the absolute one. Okay. Absolute one is also infinity. Okay. Right. So, but when we say you God, cannot take only one side and say there is only one, right? If there is one, it is also infinite. This is the, this is the Indian idea of God. Right, the okay. idea of God, which is monism, is equal to pluralism. Mm -hmm. You see, so everybody, everything is the self becoming of that one God. There's only one God, but nothing but that one God. Everything is that one God. So, so you can give it any name you want. That becomes one of its names. So you and me can be gods right now. Yes, but yes. What is the, the attitude or, I don't know, the identification to say, oh, he is a god. He's acting like a god or god. Yeah. Like. So again, there's degrees, right? There's mm -hmm. degrees. So, for example, um, it, ultimately all this comes down to how every individual considers their own requirements for becoming a god. You see, mm -hmm. that is what the whole idea of yoga is. Yoga is, and it's plural. I mean, what do you understand as God? So how will you approach that possibility, right? Yeah, for me, for example, God is yeah. like perfection, you know, it's like like the ultimate thing that I can, like, just, like I cannot right. say like someone here is like God, right. you know? Right, but can you say that you can become that perfection? Oh, well, I don't know, even in this lifetime, you know, with this. Body. Yeah, but would you possibly hold it as a goal for, for many lifetimes? Uh, yes, if I believe that something in me will survive, yes. Yeah, but but what I'm, uh, the reason I'm asking you that question is you need not hold that. I mean, it's not necessary to hold that. Some people may hold, not, may hold that, but some people may not hold that. They may hold the idea that I think that I would like to be in relation with such a God, right? Okay. Right. I would like to be in relation with such a God. I would like to come close to such a God, right? Um, if you have that view, right? Let's, let's just take that as a view. That 
That, that's why I'm saying there can be many views. Mm -hmm. There is no one view. So if you have the view that God is perfection, ultimate perfection, uh, I would like to be in relation with that and grow towards that. Not necessarily become that, but grow towards that, right? Or just be in relation with that, right? If you have that as your goal, then a certain way of a cosmology will emerge out of that. A way of understanding the world will emerge of that, out of that. What kind of world will emerge out of that? A world in which there may be degrees of closeness to ultimate perfection. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then you can say, uh, somebody who is very miraculously gifted is close to God. Right? Uh, am I making sense? Yes. That, yes. So, so this kind of a system that arises out of your definition of what you want to achieve in terms of God is going to give rise to your conception of God or of gods, mm -hmm. right? So these are all different conceptions of gods. And in the field of yoga, all these conceptions are okay. That's right. why you can have millions of gods. You can also have the idea that everybody is a god to somebody. <laughs> it's true. So my cats, I... Um... They got it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, when you become in love, then you uh, kind of have this position of the goddess with the other person. Yes. Also, it's yes. this kind of uh, figure. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, it's beautiful. But, you know, again, historically speaking, you're talking mm -hmm. about history as well. Uh, so what I'm telling you from about 2nd century BC, there are many different sects. So there are many names of gods. There are many kinds of gods. There's no one god. But idea of the Upanishads, what I told you just now is the idea of the Upanishad, that the god is one and infinite at the same time. Okay. So this idea was used to integrate these many gods using texts. Mm -hmm. So between that second century to the sixth century or so, these texts are being written according to which each of these gods are seen as a name and form of the one God. So eventually when we find about fifth century or so, right, there are five major gods. Okay. Five major okay. gods. Like Shiva? Five major gods. <laughs> Shiva, uh, Vishnu. Maybe. Vishnu, uh, Kali? Vishnu. Yeah. At that time, there is no Kali. She's just called Devi. Ah, Devi. Okay. The goddess. And Devi. I, I don't know. I don't know any. Ganesha. Ah, Ganesha. Okay. And Surya. Surya. Well, okay. The sun god. These are the five in the early period, you know, of, of the gods, of the mm -hmm. temple building gods. But there are others also. These are not the only ones. There, there is Kartikeya. There is Durga. Durga is a form of Devi. That's the main form of Devi in, in that time. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, all these are, there are sects around each of them. Okay. The sects who worship Shiva, the sects who worship Vishnu, sects ah. who worship Ganapati or Ganesha, who worship the goddess Devi, Shaktas. Um, the, the ones that who worship uh, the sun god. And then some of them, you know, the worshippers of the sun god gradually get merged with the worshippers of Vishnu, you know. Wow. So there is a little, little change in the atmosphere that takes place over history. Mm -hmm. And then now the main gods are three. They are Vishnu, who is mainly shown as Krishna, Mm. There is Shiva, right, who has many forms. There is Devi, who has many forms, like Durga, Kali, Lakshmi, uh, you know, Saraswati. Okay. Right. Uh, and many, many other forms. So 
all this is uh, now there is a reduction uh, but also each one of them has many other names and forms and each of them have a follower yes <laughs> each of them have followers yes wow so india you can not one to... kind of follower like let's say you uh, you wanted to know about kali there are many many cults of kali they approach kali in a very different way each one of them oh my god yes because i mean i was thinking i mean my formatory mind say yes kali is like the god of destruction yes and he's a god of destruction and the god of construction <laughs> in india and that's it you know so kali is like just the one that devotes herself to correct things through destruction destruction is what i i think you know is what i yeah but that is not the only way she is looked at you know there are okay. people who see her as the goddess of love there are people who see her as the most beautiful mother wow. you know yeah even if so, it's like a furious like with the tongue outside or is many ways of the of representing her there are many ways but even that one way that you're talking about which we can describe you know that one way can be understood in many ways oh iconography can actually be given different sem semiotics the sign can be mm -hmm. given different values yeah that depends on you you see a sign you see it as beautiful you actually describe it as beautiful mm -hmm. exactly. i see the same sign i i see it as horrible i describe it as horrible mm -hmm. so the approaches to kali are very large many people but they have different in bengal she's seen as the most beautiful mother goddess okay interesting Bengal is a city in uh, India, yes, a place. It's a state. Of, it's a a state. state. Yeah, yes, okay. very powerful. Uh, the the god, the most most important uh, deity in Bengal is Kali, and so, Krishna. Krishna also, but Krishna and Kali. Yeah. So what I understand, if it's the most important goddess there, they will have like a lot of art about her yes representation representation so far uh, lots like of representation temples and all yes lots of temples and lots of ways of approaching her actually many different ways of inside that state itself okay so if you want to you were asking about the iconography of kali mm -hmm. uh, that also there's some variation but there's a common set right the common set is she's black she has four hands sometimes she has more hands but the standard image she has four hands she has a sword in one hand which is like a curved sword right it's called khadga right uh, then in another hand she holds the a head right a head of a person <laughs> yes it's like it's called munda right, right. munda means head uh, in one hand is raised like this you know that is uh, the right hand or uh, her right hand is raised like this which means fearlessness she's telling you don't don't fear like tara yeah th this exactly th th that is that is the sign of fearlessness and the fourth hand sometimes is just like this which means i'm giving you gifts i'm giving you boons nice. varada and sometimes there is a cup it's the skull skull cup a skull cup oh yeah, my god yeah kapala the the yeah. skull as a cup and that is supposed to be uh, either a, a a cup for sacrifice you know that you sacrifice to me now all these things are symbols right and then mm -hmm. then she standing in the cremation ground right uh, and her vehicle is a jackal there's dead people lying all around her she's standing on the body of shiva as a corpse shiva is a corpse okay he, he's lying on the ground and she's standing on him and her tongue is sticking out and she's biting it like like ah, that okay right uh, that is the and she's wearing a necklace of skulls and also a girdle of hands people's hands that 
the people she's killed, their necks, their skulls are like a necklace, and her girdle is the hands of those people. Now, well, well. what is this, right? Now, uh, in the esoteric sense, in the sense of the people who worship Kali, uh, all these things have meanings. So what it means is the idea of Kali, uh, so it's, it's gradually develops, right? The earliest mentions of Kali are in the Upanishads. Uh, mm -hmm. So the idea of the cosmos is that the cosmos is repeatedly created. It's the eternal recurrence, right? Everything, time, what is time? Time is like a constant pulsation some you know beating beating the drum right that is okay. time it's qu quanta of experience something is born something lives and something dies born lives and dies so that is the pulsations of time mm -hmm. so that the the word for that is kala and kali means the power of time kali means the power of time Wow. So, yeah, so when we think about time as creation and destruction and rebirth, you are, you're born, you live, you die, and you are reborn, right? If you think of it like that, then Kali represents the night that swallows things, you see? So death absorbs your life and mm -hmm. then again gives it rebirth okay so, so time the power of time what is the power of time kali is the power of time it brings back into itself that is called nivritti and it pushes out a new form that is pravritti okay so she is the unit of that pulsation that is time okay so that's why she's a threshold goddess she's always on the threshold that's that's the that's the symbol of the cremation ground it's the threshold of life and death right she absorbs but she also manifests how does she manifest her tongue which she holds like that <laughs> What is it that's the control of speech? Okay. So by biting the tongue, how much of the tongue am I protruding? That has to do with the sound that is made as the tongue strikes the palate and gives a certain sound. Now the heads in her necklace are also called in an esoteric sense the necklace of alphabets alphabets alphabet meaning the words the sounds the alphabet you know mm -hmm. a b c d like that ah, right okay yeah yeah each one is one of those uh, so if you dissolve what, if you destroy what exists, if you destroy anything, uh, ultimately it will become an atom that you cannot destroy. So these are the atoms. They're called akshara mala. If it, alphabets are called akshara. Akshara means that which cannot be destroyed. Oh, really? So the, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, like the alpha alphabets, like, okay, we, we have words, like, right? Mm -hmm. you, have, mm -hmm. you have a word cat, right? You can break down that word cat, but you can't break down the sounds k, uh, and t. K, k, okay, no, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I have to. They're the atoms of sound. Oh. Yeah. I never think about it, okay? Yeah, so those are those are the the, the when she she destroys formations, she reduces them to their atomic state and wears those atoms around her neck. So basically, she is carrying the world in its atomic condition. You see, 
so that he can reconstitute it as wow. time creates the cosmos time destroys the cosmos and creates the cosmos this is happening at every minute at every second at every instant of time we are disappearing and reappearing we are being reconstituted that is that is kal that is the image of kali so when we contemplate kali we contemplate her like this and by contemplating her like this we experience something very fundamental about the nature of reality amazing yeah it's like wow worth taking after this explanation i want to print a image of kali i bring it to my home i complete contemplate it every day you know it's so beautiful it's like oh, wow yeah it's amazing oh well yeah. that is a way how we give value to an image yes And yes that, yes this is like exactly exactly that's how we that that's what they these images are for this is an example of what are these images all about that's yes. what they're, they're for contemplation therefore uh, somebody will uh, you know if you go to a temple not now now everything is commercialized now but mm -hmm. uh, the way they were made you were the either the yogis or even the pilgrims they were supposed to come into contact with these images and they were explained to them and they were supposed to contemplate them and even through the iconography as well as through the mythologies right these ideas become real to you and as you contemplate it because there is a real presence there you mm -hmm. see as you contemplate it that presence can come alive and then you have what is called darshan that's so to true. indian art the at the center of indian art there's the idea of darshan you're familiar with idea of darshan no yeah darshan is to see okay so you'll find all the gods and goddesses in india they have eyes some of them have big eyes mm -hmm. so the idea is as you're contemplating who is this goddess she can come alive and then you see she looks at you and you look at her and there is a exchange of energy shakti and there is a sense of non duality you become one with that mm -hmm. that's how the images are supposed to be used not how the they're taught in art history as you know so how do you evaluate the, whether this is co more costly than that Okay yes <laughs> that is a, a very valuable explanation and and really move my heart and my also my mental <laughs> yes thank you uh i did they have that impression from kali i always like i kind of look at her and i mean i was like i don't like it you know like fear a little bit because of this yeah, call yeah. so instead if you look at it her as a cosmic power who is giving you fearlessness and who exactly. is your own essence that is uh, constructing you destroying and constructing at the same time you know every cell in our body is reconstituted and is very important yes i mean yeah. we have we should not reject that part in us because it's necessary sometimes that a uh, our cells destroy destroy certain things that are not necessary in the body yes or certain That's beliefs true. or certain habits that is also true we we have to just every now and then we have we accumulate poisons exactly you know both physical and mental poisons mm -hmm. they have to be destroyed and not only destroyed then we have to reconstruct ourselves and we are reconstructing ourselves all the time So if we rely on the goddess then she will make us into the best of who we are through this process of regeneration. Beautiful. Thank you. I know that you have like um many uh, stories about her yes because you are a specialist a specialist in you being her. So this was a brave uh, beautiful explanation from Devashis about her. <laughs>